with a new year on the horizon, nay, a new decade, now is a perfect time to commit to living a better life, to feeling more vibrant and energetic, more loving, more peaceful, more productive, more fulfilled. So here are 20 things that you can do in 2020 to achieve the life that you want and to rejuvenate your soul. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura from How To Get Your Shit Together and I help busy people just like you to streamline and simplify your schedule and home so that you can get back to the basics of being happy. And I know that you are ready to make 2020 count. Now, you don't have to do all of these things, obviously. Chances are you're not a magic time-traveling wizard. Idea for a book. Is it too late to start NaNoWriMo? But these are 20 things that you can do to make 2020 an exceptional standout year. And if you start now, you'll be ahead of the curve. Go you. First up is to prioritize fun. So I had a big epiphany earlier this year that while I do a lot of things that I enjoy, like writing and reading, I don't do much that's exciting. So go out there and have some glee-filled, belly-laughing, splashing in the ocean kind of fun. A more vibrant, alive kind of fun, like you did when you were a kid. Speaking of which, relive a happy childhood memory. Go to the beach, build sandcastles, eat an ice cream cone. Rewatch your favorite childhood film. Let that scene with the horse scare you for life all over again. Comment if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Go camping or glamping. Make whatever your favorite food used to be. This is why I still regularly make strawberry trifle for myself. And while you're at it, meal prep. Write down a list of go-to meals and snacks, you know, things that you can really quickly and easily prepare, things that are relatively wholesome and nutritious, things that you can make out of staples that you already have on hand. It will make meal times so much less stressful and it will cut down on the amount of food that you are ordering so it will be less junk consumed and less money wasted. Plus that lovely smug feeling. Also find an exercise that you love. Life is too short to be sweating through a spin class if you do not really enjoy it. And if you do you and I probably have very little in common. <laughs> There are so many different ways to move and stretch your body that you are bound to find at least one that you actually like doing and will stick with. You don't have to burn like 5,000 calories and have washboard abs. Though I wouldn't be turning those things down <laughs> all the same. You just have to get your body moving and your muscles, or lack thereof, <laughs> working. Now, while you are busy taking care of your body, remember your mind too. Learn something new this coming year. Take a class, an online course, you know, go to a workshop or a conference, borrow some books out of the library on a topic that really interests you. You can do it for work purposes, you know, by upskilling and beefing up your resume, or you can do it purely for the fun of it by taking on a new hobby, you know, expanding your horizons, satisfying your curiosity. Also prioritize sleep and downtime. The only way that you can do any of the other things on this list is if you are rested and recharged. You can't get all wound up and excited about something if you haven't first been able to wind down. And simplify, simplify everything, streamline your entire life. It is too short for fluff. Declutter your closet so that it only contains the outfits that spark joy. Unsubscribe from any annoying email newsletters. Unfollow accounts that aren't adding pretty significant value and benefit to your life. Cut an unwanted commitment out of your schedule. 
just look at each area in your life and determine where you can ditch some dead weight because that is the only way that you are going to be able to fly free. Now, once you have streamlined, make sure that you will create a cozy nook. Have at least one area in your home that is the grown-up equivalent of a blanket fort or a treehouse. You know, somewhere that you can go and curl up and feel all comfortable and warm and secure and where you can, you know, read a book in peace and quiet and not be interrupted and just forget about the rest of the world. Make space for you. Also work to strengthen your relationships. Call a friend you haven't spoken to in a while or invite a potential new friend out for coffee. Visit family, um, organize a date night with your significant other, spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with your children. As an introvert, I have a tendency to isolate myself, but I have been working really hard lately on, you know, building new relationships, new friendships. I've been working really hard on sustaining my long-standing friendships, um, on putting my phone away when I'm with Scout. But basically what I'm getting at is just continuing to build and strengthen a loving, supportive network around you. And keep a journal. It doesn't have to be one of those really long, extended, like, dear diary type things, but even just one line a day of something that stood out for you, something that you are grateful for, a funny thing that happened. Believe me, all of those little moments add up to something magical. Because thinking back, maybe this is just me, but when I think back, I find it so easy to forget things, but when they're actually written down, then you have a tangible account of how full and wonderful your life really is. I guarantee you will never regret having an account of all of the good things in your life. I kept a gratitude journal even when I was in like the deepest depths of postnatal depression when everything seemed really black and bleak and doing that every day writing down three things that i was grateful for that helped me see that there were some glimmers of hope then plan your days and your goals and review them regularly Studies have proven time and time again that actually writing down your goals makes you significantly more likely to achieve them. I am always asked how I manage to get so much done and honestly I do think it's because I write everything down. You know, I always know what I'm supposed to be working on next. I always know what my goals and priorities are. I'm never in a situation where I don't know what the next thing to do is, where I don't know how to move something forward. So write things down and then go back every week or every month or whatever works for you and review your progress. You know, you'll be able to see what's working and what needs some tweaking. And create lists just for fun too. Lists of books you want to read, films you want to watch, podcasts you want to listen to, places you want to visit recipes you want to try. Fill your life with things that you want to do, things that inspire you, things that you want to create. You only get one life, so don't leave it to chance. You know, be intentional with your time and how you spend it. Work hard to eliminate negative beliefs. You will inevitably feel crap. Sometimes you will feel not confident enough, not strong enough, not talented enough, not brave enough. You will believe some crazy things just because that's the way that you have been conditioned to think. You know, maybe it's that money is the root of all evil. Although honestly, you might be right on that one. <laughs> or that only men can do this certain type of thing um, or only women can take on this role. Listen to the negative things that you are telling yourself and challenge them. Now one way to eliminate negative beliefs is to face and hopefully overcome a fear. Doesn't have to be something like big and terrifying. I still will not be going anywhere near snakes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Small 
things, driving to a new place, um, booking an appointment with a gynecologist, saying hi to somebody new. Once you do it one time, that gets rid of that scary unknown element. Speaking of the gynecologist, <laughs> book those appointments. Doctor, dentist, eye test, haircuts, therapy sessions, car service. Get them all in the books and then sit back and stop worrying about them. Invest in something. Stocks, index funds, yourself. Choose something in your life that is important to you. Your finances, your health, your relationships, maybe even your garden. And truly give it your care and attention. Invest your money, your time, your energy. Nurture it, give to it, and watch it grow and blossom. In a similar vein, do deep work. Learn to increase your attention span and your concentration levels by practicing. Set up a really good work environment, eliminate distractions, and really get yourself in the zone. That is how you are going to make significant progress towards things and not just little bits and pieces of random projects. Last week's video was on this topic, so if that's something you're interested in, I will link it. Choose eco-friendly options. Try and swap out at least one disposable for a reusable alternative. Get energy saving light bulbs, cut back on plastic, increase the amount of stuff that you are recycling. Do your bit to save the earth because there is no backup planet. We don't get another shot at this. Our children do not get another shot at this. Take on regular mini challenges. So the thing with resolutions and you know bigger longer term goals is that they just seem so huge and overwhelming. You know the obstacles seem insurmountable. The finish line is too far off. But instead, take on some little mini challenges, you know, maybe for 24 hours or seven days or even for a month just to test the waters, learn some lessons or, you know, increase your confidence as you go, kickstart something new. Actually, next year on the channel, I will be launching a mini habits series that is designed to help you take teeny tiny little steps that will add up to big life change. So I guess subscribe if you want to make sure that you don't miss those. And go on an adventure. It doesn't have to be this like exotic foreign destination, but do you know where your local lake is, your local wooded area where the nearby, you know, meadow or field is? Where is the closest cave? Have you ever been whitewater rafting or rock climbing or orienteering? If you are a tourist in your town, in your area, what kinds of things would you do? Or if you knew someone was coming to your area, what kinds of things would you recommend that they do? Go out there and live. Take charge of your future. And go ahead and click this video if you want to learn how to grab life by the lemons and start squeezing. Until then, curve me, Lamahagwev. I'll get back in my ship, Shikalua. Slong!